Algebra 1, number 5.3b. We're making it through these chapters, aren't we? So we're going to talk about dividing monomials now. We can divide monomials by using the properties of rational numbers and the properties of exponents. We've covered those in the last few videos. Remember, monomials are just one algebraic term. If the monomial is a number, we call it a constant. So this negative 6 and this 4 are constants, and they're also monomials. And 3 x to the second power is a monomial, so is negative 5 pq, so is 1 third a to the fifth power. Now, they have to be whole number exponents, so that 5 is a whole number, so this 1 third, this fraction coefficient, counts, because that's just the coefficient. That's not the exponent that's a fraction. And 2 a to the third power, b to the second power, is also a monomial. They each consist of one algebraic term. Now, these are not monomials, and we've discussed in th this in the last play uh, video. 1 over x is 1 divided by x. That's an operation sign right there, and you can't have an operation sign in a monomial. That's a division sign. This is not a whole number exponent. It's a, that's an exponent that's only 1 third. That's x to the 1 third power. This is a binomial because it's got two terms. There's an operation sign separating these two monomials. So this is a binomial. It's got two terms. This is a polynomial. There's two operation signs, so there's three terms here. See? That's a polynomial. Now, a, mon a monomial consists of just one term without operation signs. Like the prefix mono means like the, a monorail is a train on one track. Poly Nomials consist of more than one term. Poly means many, and binomial, the prefix bi means two, like a bicycle, okay? So we discussed that in the last video, but I thought I'd go over it again. So we can divide x to the sixth power divided by x to the second power, and we use the quotient rule, which allows us to subtract the exponents. This is a six, this is a two, we use the rule to do 6 minus 2, and we get x to the fourth power. What's happening is there's 6 x's on the, as a numerator and 2 as the denominator, and we can cancel this, these two out as a pair and these two out as a pair, and that leaves 4 x's left. See? x to the fourth power. x multiplied to itself four times. Let me just put it over a 1 because it says a fraction. But it's x to the fourth power. Now, we can even rewrite a negative exponent as a positive exponent. In this one, we've got 4a to the second power divided by 5a to the seventh power. We separate the 4 fifth as a fraction away from the a's, and we do the subtraction. We have 2 minus 7. That's going to give us a negative 5. Now, to rewrite it as a positive exponent, we turn it around and make it 1 over a to the fifth. When we see a negative exponent, think of a fraction. 2 to the negative third power is 1 over 2 to the third power, 1 divided by 2 to the third power. See? When we simplify this, because we've separated the fraction from the variable and its negative exponent, we get 4 fifth times 1 over a to the fifth. See? 4 times 1 is 4. 5 times a to the fifth power is 5a to the fifth power, and now it's simplified, see? Let's look at a little more difficult one. We've got 8m to the fifth n to the twelfth power divided by negative 2m to the third power n to the tenth. We separate the fraction numbers from the variables, and we get 8 over negative 2, 8 divided by negative 2, and we get m, 5 minus 3, and n, 12 minus 10, see? They're all separated from each other. Now we put them back together. 8 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 4. m, 5 take away 3, is m to the second power, and n, 12 minus 10, is n to the second. See? 12 minus 10. Let's try a di more difficult one. Now we've got the same negative 4 as a numerator and denominator. We still separate it from the variables with the exponents, and we get four, negative 4 over negative 4, and we get a, 3 minus 2, and b, 4 minus 1. See? Because there's a little invisible 1 when there's no exponent there, right? So, same numerator and denominator, that's going to equal a 1. And then, 3 minus 2 is 1, so we just get a regular a with its 
invisible 1 sitting there. And then b is 4 minus 1, so that's b to the third power. We don't need to write the 1, so we just have a b to the third power, see? Because if we did 1 times a times b to the third power, it would still be a b to the third power, see? So in multiplying monomials, the product is always a monomial. But this isn't true for division. We can divide monomials, and sometimes the quotient won't be a monomial. Just like this 1 over x. This is 1 divided by x. Or in this one, see? If we get a negative 5 exponent, and it's written as this, see? It's got a division sign here as the fraction. So that makes it not a monomial. It's got an operation sign in it. This is 4 divided by 5a to the fifth power. 4 divided by 5a to the fifth power is not a monomial. It's a binomial. See? The 4 would be a constant, and then that would be a term. See? So in division, it sometimes does not give you a monomial, but in multiplication, when you multiply two monomials, you'll get a monomial, okay? And then also remember that zero is not included, okay? When you divide, it's undefined. You can't divide zero by three or three by zero. So remember, the quotient rule for exponents doesn't work with zero, and there'll be a link to video 5.2c that talks about this more. And just remember, division is not zero's friend. Poor little zero. So see this video's description for links to previous similar or helpful videos on this topic, okay? All right, we're going to move on to our next unit, and we're going to talk about scientific notation in 5.4a. I hope I'll see you there. I hope you're doing well. Keep plugging. Keep trying. I'm proud of you. You can do this.